Hi there, my name is Dylan Okino. I'm a second year biotechnology student and this is my final project for EFB 307 Principles of Genetics. This project is focused upon French geneticist Francois Jacobs. Born June 17, 1920 to Simone Jacobs and Therese Frank in Nancy, France. His grandfather was a four-star general and served as a very large inspiration and role model throughout his youth. Although his mother's side of the family was Jewish, shortly after his bar mitzvah, he became an atheist. Francois enrolled in Le C. Carnot at the age of seven, where he would attend for the next 10 years of his education. Growing up, he was constantly bullied and picked on, which caused him to hate attending school. He felt college would be the same way, so he didn't pursue his love of math or physics. Two years into med school, he traveled to Britain and enlisted as a medic. After four years of service, he was severely wounded in the Battle of Normandy in August of 1944. He was then rotated home to recover, and after seven months in the hospital, he returned to finish medical school. Once he returned, he began to research tyrethicin and its effectiveness as an antibiotic on localized infections of the human body. Due to his injuries from the war, he was unable to practice surgery, so he turned his mind and efforts towards biology and the field of genetics. Now setting his sights in the field of biology, in 1954, he obtained a doctor in science at the Pasteur Institute in Paris. During this time, he published his thesis on lysogenic bacteria and the provirus concept. This helped catapult him to the head of the genetics department after only working at the institute for four years. While a professor, he worked alongside Ellie Woolman, establishing the nature of the relationships between the prophage and the genetic material of the bacterium. They established new concepts together and published a book with their findings called Sexuality and the Genetics of Bacteria. In 1958, Jacobs and Jokes Minaud, who was another geneticist, worked together to study the mechanisms that were responsible for the transfer of genetic information. They also sought to understand how the synthesis of different macromolecules were adjusted. This led them to propose new concepts such as operons and regulator genes. Jacobs and Minaud also found that in a normal cell, there is a certain balance between the regulator and structural genes that causes the cell to adapt when conditions vary and change. If this balance is altered, it can create new enzymes that can be either beneficial or harmful to the survival of the cell. Francois's most notable experiment was the discovery of messenger ribonucleic acid, also known as mRNA. Alongside geneticists Sidney Brenner and Matthew Mieselson, they worked with phage-infected bacteria to show that a type of RNA carries the DNA message to the ribosome. When conducting their experiment, Brenner, Mieselson, and Jacobs were looking to analyze how the light and heavy isotopes in the ribosomes were distributed. They began by growing bacteria in isotopes of carbon and nitrogen so they could be tracked throughout the experiment. Phage that lacked a heavy isotope were added to the culture. They had a 32P, which is a radioactive labeled DNTP molecule that helps differ the phage infected bacteria in the culture from the bacteria with the radio labeled heavy isotopes. Francois extracted RNA and ribosomes from the bacteria culture and ran them through a centrifuge in order to separate the isotopes within the ribosomes and the new phage infected RNA. They discovered that the ribosomes were made with the heavy isotopes. This shows the ribosomes were not made after the phage infection. A new type of RNA was discovered that played a role in the protein synthesis but must be a larger molecule because it was found in the sediment at the bottom of the tube. This became known as messenger RNA. When the bacteria was infected, the DNA synthesis immediately stopped but the RNA synthesis continued. This contributes to why the ribosomes still contain the heavy isotopes. They also discovered the pre-existing ribosomes were used for synthesis and no new ribosomes from the infection were created. The discovery of messenger RNA made a huge impact on the field of genetics and most of the scientific community. mRNA plays a vital role in the central dogma of DNA, carrying genetic code from the DNA to the ribosome so proteins can be made. This discovery has also helped to make big advancements in the medical field. mRNA vaccines are a new type of vaccine to affect the ribosomes of your immune cells directly. This causes them to begin creating the virus antigen instead of waiting for the cells to respond themselves. This process is being used today for the development of the COVID-19 vaccine. These vaccines will be more impactful and have a higher efficiency than most common vaccinations. 
Since this is a relatively new process, it is very experimental and expensive, but with more study and research, it can help save a lot of lives. After winning a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1965, Bashoa Jacobs continued to teach and educate. He was appointed professor at the College of France and was given the chair of cell genetics. This was around the time Nuremberg discovered most of the codons that code for amino acids within organisms. Becoming very intrigued on certain philosophies of life sciences, Jacobs published another book in 1970 titled The Logic of Life, A History of Heredity. In the book, he starts in the 16th century and he traces the study of living organisms that have led to the current foundation of molecular biology. In 1947, he married Lise Bloch, who was a pianist. Together they had four children, Pierre, Laurent, Odie, and Henry. Lise passed away in 1983, Francois later remarried in 1999 to Genevieve Barriere. Finally, on April 19, 2013, Jacobs passed away at the age of 92. Francois Jacobs left behind a legacy that has massively influenced the world of genetics. Thank you. Still here? It's over. Go home.